So hello my friend, Devon Lennox here, Photography P. Com. In today's video, we'll do our review of Leica's APO Sumicron 75mm. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through this video to skip to a more relevant section if you'd like to. But with that said, let's get started. The 75mm focal length is an odd choice to many photographers since it's sectioned just between 50 and 85mm. But the Leica APO Sumicron M 75mm, first released in 2005, comes to give Leica M shooters more reach than their beloved 50 millimeter and it also provides a more intimate experience but not so much to distance yourself like an 85 or 90 millimeter yet the APO Sumicron is currently the fastest 75 millimeter lens Leica offers outside of the higher-end Noctilux and it survived to date without being discontinued like its peers the Sumilux and the Sumerit 75 millimeters but it seems it's made it this long for a good reason and in fact the APO Sumicron reigns as the most technically superior lens of its focal length optically speaking and it sets a new performance benchmark for the Leica rangefinder system still has Leica gone too far making the lens too clinical and lifeless in their search of optical perfection and considering it's not an immediate popular choice is this lens merely underrated or simply overhyped Let's find out. But first, what are the designations that Leica uses if you're unfamiliar with these terms? First, Sumicron. Leica Sumicron designates its high-end lineup of lenses featuring a maximum aperture of f2. These lenses also obtain their best manufacturing ability and have uncompromised quality. You'll find this designation across many of their camera formats, including M, S, T, and PL. Next, Leica M. Leica M lenses are those designed for Leica's rangefinder cameras, which dates back to 1954 with the release of the Leica M3. These are classic rangefinder inspired lenses. As such, they're compact, manual focusing only, and use a bayonet style lens mount. Next, ASPH. This designates a Leica lens that has an aspherical lens element. This optical element uses a high refractive index to correct aberrations like coma. Doing so improves the image quality. And while more expensive to manufacture, it offers superior performance than a traditional spherical lens element. And lastly, APO. This designation describes a lens that features an apochromatic design. This design combines several spherical lens elements to dramatically remove chromatic aberrations across all three color channels which are red, green, and blue. Theoretically, it also creates a sharper lens that produces more true-to-life images free of any color fringing, and it's a specialty design used in Leica's top-of-the-line lenses. With that said though, let's cover the build quality, construction, and design of this lens. Some general specifications first. This lens opens to f2 and closes to f16, and it uses a 49mm filter thread and weighs 430 grams. It also offers a working distance or a minimum focusing distance of 0.7 meters or 2.3 feet with a reproduction ratio of 1 to 7 and the angle of view is 27 degrees if you're curious. Internally, it features seven elements in five groups and it offers a nine blade diaphragm. It also employs the aprochromatic design, which I mentioned earlier, which uses both fluorite and a partial dispersion element to remove chromatic aberrations and reduce color fringing. Leica also included several design cues taken from the Sumilux M 50 millimeter. Namely, it receives the same double gauss construction, giving it the ASPH designation, and it too houses a rare floating lens element also abbreviated FLE, which helps maintain image quality and sharpness across the focusing range. Externally, the APO Sumicron is characterized by its ergonomics and compact size given its focal length. Of course, at 430 grams or 15.2 ounces, it's on the heavier side for a rangefinder lens and outdoes its largely similar counterpart from Pentax. But compared to other mid-range telephoto lenses, it's easily light enough for comfortable handheld shooting for those longer outings. And it's relatively relatively short too, just measuring 66.8 millimeters or 2.6 inches. Together, the setup is well balanced, solid, and easy to maneuver when paired with the Leica M11. However, like many Leica M lenses, the APO Sumicron isn't technically weather sealed, at least not in a traditional sense. But with all Leica products, they're built tough and can easily withstand some adverse weather like light rain. That said, I still wouldn't suggest risking using this lens in a sudden downpour. Now onto the topic of handling. 
it's excellent. The aperture ring is closest to the lens hood on this lens and it offers a nice clicking engagement for a tactile feedback. While the focusing ring, which is located in the middle of the lens, has a textured grip for added comfort and more resistance. Leica's also added a built-in lens hood that you can conveniently engage by sliding out and twisting to lock it in place. Overall, as a package, the APO Summicron is well-built and easily on par for the course for Leica and mount lenses. There's little room for complaints here, and despite its age, it still remains exceptionally well-built, premium, and immediately gives you an impression of quality. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photography PX launched a sister company called PXPresets.com? Well, if you didn't, PXPresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX Presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. That said, let's talk about the image quality on this lens. The image quality on the APO Summicron is excellent. And Leica surely excelled with the optical design of this lens, making it a perfect match for the M11's 60 megapixel full frame sensor. Even wide open, this lens is outstandingly sharp, especially in the center of the frame, thanks to its FLE design. Yet it offers better edge to edge detail than the Summilux M 50 millimeter lens from which it takes its design inspiration and better micro contrast too, letting your subject pop even more than that lens. In fact, this lens actually gives you some forgiving room to misfocus slightly and there's also no real reason to stop the lens aperture down but if you do you'll be handsomely rewarded with more sharpness which peaks around f5.6 plus you'll also see minimal chromatic aberration in the focus plane ghosting virtually no distortion and little if any lens flare unfortunately though its sharpness creates results that can feel overdone and characterless at times and i will confirm what many other journalists have said the apo summicron is indeed clinical to a certain extent and the images are as close as I've ever seen to date to technically perfect natural and accurate for some that's great news since it leaves you plenty of room for post-processing and from use I found that perfect for car photography landscapes and cityscapes that said, I can see this becoming an issue if you're a street, lifestyle, wedding, or photojournalism photographer, and the added sharpness of this lens can really add unwanted retouching time to your workflow since it will highlight every single image flaw. So if you're not a fan of retouching, I would suggest taking a hard look at the raw images from this lens beforehand and considering purchasing this one. Still, I take all of this information I just said with a grain of salt because this level of image quality is a must for high end media mediums like commercial photography and architecture, and ultimately I believe this is an area this lens really shines. Now as far as the bokeh and rendering on this lens, it's very smooth, and I'd say it's close to the Summilux M 50mm, which we also tested alongside this lens. It too renders that unique, cinematic, and hard to describe aesthetic like is known for, yet unlike the Summilux, the APO Summicron doesn't suffer from the heavy vignette when used wide open, and instead it shows only a moderate vignette for the this focal length and is fairly transparent by f2.8. Overall, I'd say there's little to fault here from an image quality standpoint. The image quality the APO Summicron produces is arguably best in class, especially on the Leica M mount system. It produces modern looking images with excellent contrast, punch, and gorgeous colors. And its F2 aperture is also entirely usable without any compromises. So if you're after natural razor sharp photos that are technically perfect, you'll get that in plenty more from this lens. And the image quality as a whole is a non-issue and it's simply brilliant. Next, let's talk about the focusing performance on this lens. As a rangefinder lens, the APO Summicron offers only manual focusing. And unlike some of its M-mount peers, 
namely the Sumicron M28mm. It doesn't include a focusing ring with a finger grip. Still, the focus collar is large on this lens. It's ribbed and it maneuvers smoothly into position. It's also well dampened, although maybe to the point where some photographers feel it's stiff to move. Otherwise, this lens also has a depth of field scale with measurements in both feet and meters. With it, you can know how much will be in focus at a given distance, which is perfect for zone focusing without using the rangefinder. Overall, the focus throw is excellent. You have about 90 degrees of rotation to use, and it's easy to work with throughout. So if you enjoy manual focusing or zone focusing, you won't have any issues or problems focusing this lens. That said, what are the downsides of this lens? The only potential downside is the APO Sumicron doesn't have a rounded diaphragm like most contemporary lenses. So when you shoot backgrounds with specular highlights at f4 or higher, you will see the octagonal shape of the aperture blades and this is usually distracting if there's a lot of highlights in the bokeh. Also, despite being smaller than many mirrorless and DSLR lenses of this focal length, like a purist may still find this lens heavy and bulky. So if you're in that camp, then consider the Sumer M variant instead. That said, what is the final value of this lens? There are very few current options available for this particular focal length on Leica's M mount, but given those options and the current price point of this lens, I'd argue the APO Sumicron is undoubtedly a top choice. Of course, it's still Leica and it's still expensive, but it offers immense value considering its optical performance. In the end though, the APO Sumicron M 75 millimeter becomes an icon and a masterpiece piece. It offers near perfect images with class leading central sharpness, minimal distortions, superb color and a build quality ready to last a lifetime. And it unquestionably takes advantage of the full potential of the Leica's M11's 60 megapixel sensor. Granted, it isn't a must lens for every photographer, especially those shooting portraits who despise retouching. And true, it's technically perfect image quality will come at the slight heft and size compared to what some Leica Empiris would prefer. Not to mention, some photographers will turn their noses at its departure from the charm and character of Leica's M mountain lenses. Still, if you want the best 75 millimeter lens around, this is it. And you'll find it difficult to find a sharper lens at this focal length wide open with this level of image quality. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography, P. Dot com.